Hey gang, we'll hear from the Ashland Fly Shop. It's mid-May and we're just starting to see some of the salmon flies pop and we're just anticipating this awesome hatch that we see every year. About another week and it's really going to ramp up and it's going to start getting crazy. So we wanted to give you our essential tips that we have found um, over the last many years of fishing this hatch that we get a lot of feedback, a lot of questions about. Uh, we want to share with you what we think are our most essential tips for fishing this awesome western hatch. So we're gonna start off with rod choice, and this really depends a lot on the size of the water that you're fishing. So in Southern Oregon here, we have pretty big rivers, you know, the Rogue River, uh, the Klamath River, and this would reflect a lot on the Deschutes and other places that we see this hatch. So obviously for salmon flies, we're talking a five, six, or, or even seven weight rod. So we're talking about big flies. We're casting size four, six, and eight wind resistant flies. And so, you know, these size rods are really going to cover your close in fishing, which will do a lot for salmon flies um, underneath the trees in close. But we're also gonna wanna bomb them out there a bit on some of our larger rivers. Um, and so these rods can really handle that. I see people really enjoying fishing seven weights a lot. I think that's not out of character. Now, would consider a, a fairly fast rod. This is a time when that's gonna come in handy. Larger flies, fast line speed, and really moving these flies around. Um, I think that's really gonna be in, in your best interest for, uh, for fishing this hatch. Lines that we carry that we really like that fit the bill for this hatch would be the SA Anadro line. Again, this is a line that we typically recommend for steelhead fishing and nymph fishing and stuff, but it starts at a five weight. And this is an awesome, aggressive forward taper with a long back taper. This thing will just bomb them out there. So this is a very nice line uh, for salmon flies. Uh, the Rio Grande uh, by Rio, this is an awesome line. It's a full line size over, so keep that in mind. Um, if you're buying a five weight line, it's typically gonna be a six. So, you know, for a fast action rod, a modern rod, this will be, be a very nice line for the salmon fly hatch. Um, the Rio Gold is a real standard. It's a great line. I would say it's right on the edge of being on the light side, but it's such a wonderful casting line. You might feel it sort of sputtering out a bit with some of the bigger flies. Um, but you know, it's really such a great all around line with a nice forward taper that it's, it's worth talking about. And lastly, the SA MPX line. This is just a fantastic line. It's the old GPX taper. It's a half a line size heavy. It's got a nice forward taper on it, an excellent taper. You might consider even overlining this rod. You'd be about a line and a half almost, but if you're looking for a specific line for these flies on like a six weight rod or something, it would really, it would really punch out there. So MPX by SA, another great line for the salmon fly hatch. The bottom line is if you're covering a ton of water and you're really showing uh, fish that have not seen a lot of flies, you could fish a chubby Chernobyl all day long and you would get tons of action. So if you've got a, a kind of a semi-secret little stream or something that you like to fish, um, and you know there's salmon flies on it, you could probably fish a chubby Chernobyl all day long and, and do quite well. But not a lot of us uh, you know, have that luxury. We're fishing over fish that are really getting fished heavily. We're fishing over uh, you know, certain sections of the river that, you know, that are getting fished. So we want to rotate flies because we're, we're kind of staying in the same place a lot. So going over, rotating flies is really a big deal. And, what I feel is that you really want, and this applies a lot to just dry fly fishing, but you really want to rotate the types of patterns. So, you know, kind of a sparse hair wing type pattern, uh, switching to a big foam pattern, uh, these very different distinct types of flies, you know, a rogue river stone, a kind of a bullet head deer hair type fly, even to something crazy like Paulson's flutter bug. Like, I really love switching it up, putting it in different places, you might get a reaction from that fish that you didn't even see refuse your chubby, you know, like uh, uh, 10 minutes ago. Um, if you're fishing over heavily fished waters, really switching things up is, is really crucial. Floatants, talking floatants. Floatants are absolutely critical to this hatch as they are to any time you're fishing dry flies all day. I just feel like you've got to have your, your floatant program dialed. Um, pretty simple the way we approach uh, floating for this hatch. 
Um, we really like to start with a gel or liquid floatant, and our heavy hitter for years has been Aquel. We really like the Loon products. So starting with uh, an Aquel floatant, you know, you don't want to work too much of it in. You want to, don't want it to be too greasy. I usually start with about a dime size amount and really work that into the fly until the fly gets knocked down or eaten once or twice or really waterlogged. And then at that time, we shake that water out and that's when we start using our dry shake. There are many great dry shakes out there. We like the Umqua Shimazaki or Tamco Shimazaki. That's really nice stuff. Also Loon Top Ride, but your dry shake by far your best defense for keeping that fly floating high. Um, bottle of Aquel, bottle of Loon Top Ride or Shimazaki, really, really nice stuff. That's how you want to approach that. Um, so starting with 2X or 3X, uh, shorter leaders, seven and a half foot leaders, so you can really pitch those bugs out there is really where I suggest starting now. As the hatch wears on, as the fish get pickier, as they've been caught once or twice, yes, maybe stepping down 4X, 5X, you might need to do that. Again, you're really going to have to be careful on your set. Make sure you have a nice, smooth, slow set, and that's really going to help not break fish off. But in the beginning, you know, we're all so pumped to get out there and fish this hatch. I do see a lot of people breaking flies off on small leaders, so keep that in mind. Starting with 3X, starting with 9 foot 3X, 7.5 foot 3X is a good bet. I like your shorter leaders if I can get away from them because it really kicks that fly out, you know, so you can imagine a really aggressive forward taper line with a short 3X or 2X leader, man, that fly is going to really pump out there. This is a situation where you can really uh, use this two-hand style rod with dry flies. You know, a uh, two-hand rod is really not much of a presentation rod, but if you don't really need to make, you know, such a smooth presentation, you're fishing a big hopper or a big dry on big water, it's a very legitimate tool. And for this hatch on these big rivers, it is phenomenal. I cannot even tell you how much fun I've had fishing uh, these flies way out in the middle of the river with, uh, you know, with a little trout spay rod. So let's talk a little bit about how to set it up. So your trout spay rods, your, your three, fours, and fives are going to be the sizes that you want uh, to use for this hatch. And I would say probably threes and fours are going to be the best, with the four being probably the outstanding one um, that's really going to be able to cast these big flies long distances. Um, and you know cover the kind of water that you want to cover so so that would be my suggestion anywhere from 10 you know 10 to 11 and a half feet uh, there's a lot of great choices out there and two rods that we really love here at the Ashland fly shop um, in the premium and uh, more moderate price category are the Winston B3TH microspay the four weight just phenomenal stick just we can't keep them in the store just a wonderful rod perfect rod for this hatch um, you could also consider the three depending on the size of the water and the Reddington Hydrogen. Uh, these are wonderful, wonderful sticks uh, as well. Um, other rods would be the Pirouet Renegade, excellent stick, really in that trout spay category and on and on. We have other choices as well, but those are really uh, real standouts that we like a lot. Your fly lines are pretty critical. A line that we absolutely love is the Rio Scandi body. And we talk a ton about this line and for great reason. It is a phenomenal line. It's kind of a Skagit style length at 23 feet for an 11, 11 and a half foot rod. But it uh, has a real Scandi style taper. This is a line that you can put your 12 foot leaders on, your standard mono leaders and your poly leaders and, and create a full floating system. So the Rio Scandi body and then a line that's shown up in the last uh, year or so is the SA Spay series, the SA Spay Light. Uh, Scandi version. This is a wonderful integrated line with a head that's almost identical to the Rio Scandi body. So those two lines for fishing salmon flies, they're nothing like them. They are really, really wonderful heads for this and they will really bomb those flies out there. And again, a tip on these lines, you do want to choose in more of a Skagit weight than a Scandi weight for these uh, for these lines, bumping close to your to your Skagit recommended weights are really going to be the highest performance for these uh, for these lines on these rods. This is maybe my favorite tip: uh, go fishing a lot uh, during the hatch. Uh, you really want to try and get out there a bunch. I, I have seen the craziest stuff uh, when I've been out there fishing. I have seen millions and millions of bugs around uh, with no fish rising to them. 
<clears throat> I've been out in the morning early with no bugs around and just had epic dry fly fishing. So it's really hard to go once or even twice and feel like you got a real sense of what's going on. Or, or I do talk to a lot of people who are discouraged. They went out and it was just, there wasn't any fish there this time or something because they didn't see any rising, although there were lots of bugs. But the truth is that it really changes and fish react to these bugs differently as the weeks go by. Why? I don't know exactly, but you know, there we can speculate that it has to do with weather patterns or high pressure or any other reason that fish don't respond to food when it's around. But um, you will find during, if you go several times, you will find that um, at some point they're really going to react, they're really going to get on them, they're really going to feed hard on them. So, it's good to get out there, to get out there a bunch of times. Try different times of the day. Try, lot, most everyone goes in the evening because that's when the bugs are, bugs are out. But try early, try midday. Try these different times. If there's a, 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 a rainstorm, a warm summer storm that comes through, try fishing in that. I've heard incredible stuff about that kind of fishing. So mix it up a bit. Try to get out there several times. Uh, that's my prescription for you uh, to try and fish as much as you can. <laughs> But it's really true during the salmon fly hatch, you really want to give it a chance. Uh, really want to give yourself those best chances for success by getting out there. So thanks so much for tuning in, folks. This is one of our favorite times of the year. We got the weather, the bugs are out, summer's kicking off with this awesome hatch. So again, I really encourage you to get out there, uh, get after it as much as you can. We always appreciate you tuning in to our videos. Thank you so much and we'll see you out there.